Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Important details to understand when the IRS might contact taxpayers. Details when the IRS might contact a tax. Let me, let me take a wild guess as to when the IRS might contact a taxpayer. When they want more money. I mean, can't we just sum it up pretty, pretty much like that? You know, when the IRS wants more money, you know, they're probably going to start contacting taxpayers at that point in time. I mean, honestly, like, like the IRS is like a typical college kid demanding more money because they spent it all on beer or, or whatever they do these days. I mean, honestly, the, the government's been making so many errors with the economy, inflation and foreign policy. It's ridiculous. And then they basically claim like it's your fault for not properly carrying some subtotal from Schedule C to Schedule SC to Schedule 2 to Form 1040 Line 10 or, or something. I mean, honestly, like, like I'm convinced that the art of government is the art of the red herring. I'm telling you. But instead of dragging a dead fish to throw the dogs off the trail... The government drags TikTok influencers through the Oval Office to dumbify the American public. I mean, honestly, it's like it's more dumbifying than the fentanyl they've refused to stop coming across the southern border. Like, like every age has its distractions, you know. I mean, the, the, the Romans had the Colosseum and the gladiators, whereas we have TikTok and the drag queen story hour. I mean, honestly... The government getting mad at people making errors is like the Joker getting mad at Kamala Harris for her scary, shrieking, cackling, awkward laughing. <laughs> okay. Wow. Actually, the Joker may have a point there. I mean, that was, that was way over the top. It'd be funny if it weren't so pathetic. No, what the heck, I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> IR 2023-56, March 23rd, 2023, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service reaches out in multiple ways to educate taxpayers while ensuring it fairly enforces the nation's tax laws. There are important factors to keep in mind about when the IRS may initiate direct contact with a taxpayer. For people who owe taxes, the IRS provides many different payment options to help taxpayers meet their obligations. Taxpayers can avoid late filing and interest penalties by submitting their tax return and using one of these options. There's a link to that here to pay what they owe by April 18th. For those struggling to pay in full by the deadline, the IRS offers several different options. For example, most individual taxpayers qualify for a payment plan and can use the IRS online payment agreement. There's a link to that here to set up a payment plan. So remember the goal here. We're trying to avoid contact from the IRS because that's usually not good. And we're trying to avoid the sticks of penalties and interest. And how do we do that? We comply, right? We, that means we have to file the tax return by the deadline, April 18th, or possibly file an extension. If we file the extension, we note that that doesn't mean that we don't still have to pay them because those are two different things in essence. So if you owe them money by April 18th, filing an extension doesn't avoid getting hit from the sticks of penalties and entry interest related to the late payments, although it might avoid getting hit from the sticks of penalties and interest for the, the also the late filing, right? There are two different things. That's what I'm trying to be pointing out here. There are two different things. Now, if someone can't pay the taxes, then what you don't want to do is just ignore the situation because what usually happens to IRS being a slow bureaucratic kind of system is nothing at first. But then you're going to have an accumulation of penalties and interest over time. And eventually the steamroller will hit you. Eventually the IRS will, <laughs> will take action at some point in time. And by that time, you're going to have a lot of penalties and interest tacked on over the top of the original debt, which is not good. So what you want to do then is try to set up a payment plan or something to take proactive action. That's what the tax code is incentivizing us to do, right? To avoid getting hit with the sticks. And that means that, that if you can't pay the tax, you want to set up an online payment agreement or something like that. It's usually a fairly easy, painless uh, thing to do. You don't have to, you know, go grovel to anyone or anything. You can go online and basically fill out and usually fill out the, the payment. And that's usually, again, far better 
than doing nothing, even though doing nothing uh, doesn't have any consequences in the short term. It, 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 it'll compile usually in the long term and then cause a bigger problem. So, uh, so, uh, so, so you can have the online payment agreement to set up a payment plan, including an installment agreement to pay off an outstanding balance over time. An installment agreement like a loan, a typical loan most people are familiar with, like a mortgage, you pay it off in monthly payments oftentimes. So people encountering a tax issue such as unpaid bill or a question about their taxes will typically receive multiple letters in the mail from the IRS. So usually people are well aware of what the of 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 what the IRS is doing or what they want by the time they actually take like collective action because they've been sending out letters. They're usually going to be slow IRS moving bureaucracy, slow moving bureaucracy. But the more that sometimes when people just don't see any actual action being taken for a long period of time, then it becomes easier to ignore the the uh, messages that are coming. And then the IRS will take action at some point uh, in time. And by that, again, by that time, the penalties and interest will typically be substantially higher than they otherwise would have been. So people are encouraged to respond to these letters quickly since interest and penalties can compound quickly. Most IRS contacts with taxpayers uh, are through regular mail delivery by the United States Post Postal Service. So they're, they're the old ancient snail mail. That's how they do it. So they're not going to be TikToking you or, you know, generally they'll, they'll be doing TikTok, but not for your personal debt. That's just for entertainment purposes for whatever. But, but they, so, so actually I think they banned TikTok in the federal, the federal government. So they, but whatever. In any case, they don't contact you with the tweets or the Facebook messages or anything. They usually use the snail mail usually. So, however, there are limited circumstances when the IRS will come to a home or business as part of a collection investigation, an audit, or an ongoing criminal investigation. That's when it gets scary, man. IRS in-person visits. IRS employees that may make face-to-face -face visits outside an IRS office include revenue officers, revenue agents, and IRS criminal investigation special agents. IRS employees are trained to respect taxpayer rights, and there are some important facts to keep in mind about the different types of visits. You got the revenue officers or IRS civil enforcement employees who work to resolve compliance issues such as unfilled re unfiled returns and or taxes owed. All situations where the taxpayer typically would have received multiple IRS letters in advance. So at some point, they send Rocky out. At some, no, <laughs> probably at some point, you know, you've got, no, in any case, this in-person visit may be unscheduled and can, can be to share information, inform taxpayers of their tax filing and payment obligations, and work with taxpayers to resolve their tax issues and bring them into compliance. I don't like the sound of that. I don't like this. They conduct interviews to gather financial information and provide taxpayers with the necessary steps to become and remain compliant with the tax laws. Uh, revenue agents usually conduct in-person field audits that are normally at the taxpayer's home, place of business, or accounts uh, office where the organization's financial books and records are located. Revenue agents will make contact via mail or phone prior to any visit. So you've got the warning action there. Revenue officers and agents always carry two forms of official credentials with a serial number and their photo. Taxpayers have the right to see each of these credentials and can also request an additional method to verify their identification. Remember, taxpayers should know they have a tax issue before the visit occur since multiple mailings occur in this situation. More information on identifying legitimate IRS re representatives and how to report scams can be found at irs.gov. And then you got the IRS CI special agents. In fact, this is the ones that got like Al Capone or something, I'm, I guess. I'm just, you know, they, whatever. CI special agents investigate potential criminal violations of the Internal Revenue Code and related financial crimes. IRS CI's investigative jurisdiction includes tax, money laundering, and bank sec uh, secrecy, secrecy act laws. IRS CI special agents 
always present their law enforcement credentials when conducting investigations. IRSCI may visit a taxpayer's home or business unannounced during an investigation. So they could just pop up anytime because they think they might suspect you're a criminal. So they get, so then they get to do whatever they want. So, however, they will not demand any sort of payment. Learn more about, about IRSCI on IRS.gov. So that sounds like an, I've had teaching. A lot of people are kind of interested in that IRSCI fraud kind of stuff, which does sound kind of like an interesting thing. Uh, you can follow the money, man, follow the money. That's where it's at. You think it's boring, but no, but no, that's how you get things done. Crunch in the numbers, crunch in the numbers. Anyway, how to report impersonation scams. If a person doesn't have a previously known tax issue and suspects someone is trying to impersonate an IRS employee, there are a variety of options to report phone, email, and other impersonation scams. Report impersonation scams to the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration on the TIGTA report waste fraud and abuse webpage. There's a link to that here. Taxpayers can also call. There's a number. I won't say it here because there'll be a link to this in the description. You can check it out. Uh, protect your community by reporting fraud, scams, and bad business practices. Report phone scams to the Federal Trade Commission at Report Fraud FTC. There's a link to that here. Report an unsolicited email claiming to be from the IRS or an IRS-related system like the Electronic Federal Tax Payment System to the IRS at phishing at irs.gov for a comprehensive listing of recent tax scams, consumer alerts, and how to report them. You can visit tax scams forward slash consumer alerts. There's links to all that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.